Hey, what's going on guys? B Flat in here with a brand new build video here today. This is Bulldoze Mose. The purpose of Bulldoze Mose is running everything over with your Iron Bear. Now this is the first Iron Bear Mose that I've ever done before. Every other Mose build that I've done was all Mose specific and support based. Um, this is just going to be pure bear. Let's get right into it, shall we? Fire in the Stags Den, splash damage with bonus fire damage. Any sort of damage that you're going to be doing that splash, you get the bonus fire damage on top of that. Super duper broken with the Mayhem Stalin right now. Highly suggested. Because we're going to be using Iron Bear, we want our weapons to drain less fuel. And every single time we kill an enemy, we gain some fuel back. This is going to be super important with the class mod that we're going to be primarily using. And we have Grizzled. Grizzled is whenever you kill an enemy outside of your Iron Bear, you get some cooldown time so that you can get your Iron Bear back. Stainless Steel Bear, super important, probably one of the main skills of this build. Uh, you gain increased armor, max fuel, and damage with your bear, and with our class one, we can get some bonuses rolled into it. If you don't have anything with Stainless Steel Bear, if you don't have your class mod with more stainless steel bear, absolutely max this out with all of your skill points because you're going to need as much stainless steel bear as possible. Tor cross promo, all splash damage has a chance to double in size and you do increase splash damage, it's amazing. And then auto bear is really really good for uh, not only a class mod that we have sometimes, but uh, we get to have iron bear stick around so we can stick ourselves inside the docker bear so we can get more done damage so that we can also get uh, drizzled proct. Because if you're in uh, the Daka Bear, there's a lot of things that transfer over to Daka Bear, and Grizzle is one of them if you get kills while inside the turret. Okay, and over to our green tree, we have Cloud of Lead. We don't really need Cloud of Lead, but we need to move down the tree somehow, and Match Set doesn't really help us. So uh, we have two rolled into it as well with our uh, class mod. So it's uh, every fourth shot won't consume ammo, and you get bonus fire damage. Docker Bear is super important for what we're doing. Your Iron Bear damage is increased. You get uh, increased gun damage. And a lot of skills are going to be transferring over, which I will be mentioning that interact with Docker Bear, including um, being able to get cooldown time with Grizzled. But we're going to revisit Docker Bear a few times with uh, how the red tree works with it. And we do Stoke the Embers for bonus fire damage. We're having Cloud of Lead. We're having uh, Fire in the Stag's Den, so bonus fire damage is never a bad thing. Redistribution, every time we get a crit, we restore HP, and we also restore ammo. It's more here for the HP, because we don't use Vampire on this build. Scorching RPMs, we get increased fire rate and crit hit damage, and Iron Bear gains increased hardpoint damage. We need this for the Iron Bear damage primarily. And then Specialist Bear. If you equip two of the same guns, you're doing an additional 60% damage on those guns. This also counts if you're using different variations, like I use all the rail guns. Um, so if I'm using one shock rail gun and one fire rail gun, both of those will still gain the damage. As long as the action skill is the same, the augments don't matter uh, for Specialist Bear to get you that increased damage. And over to our red tree, four to armored infantry, just so we can get some damage reduction and gun damage. One to security bear for the bubble, just so we can have more defense. Uh, Drowning in Brass is great. This was patched recently, so both of our guns are going to be gaining uh, damage from this every single time we get a stack. 20% damage per stack is amazing and great. We can have a max of three stacks and uh, it lasts for 15 seconds. So if we can get three really fast kills, we get 60% gun damage. Thin red line, this is super important to the build. So what's happening is, is that we're taking all of our HP and we're reserving it and we're throwing it into our shield. So we can have far more shield because shield is our survivability. And you'll see a little bit more interaction with this as we look into our skills. Flood of Ingenuity, uh, we don't really need it too too much, but we get max shield and recharge rate and we gain resistance to shock damage. This is really good for the shield and the shock resistance is also pretty nice because we're primarily using shields the entire time. Experimental Munitions, whenever Moser Iron Bear scores a crit, they do bonus fire damage on top of it. And this also works with like Cloud of Lead and uh, Stoke the Embers for bonus fire damage. Desperate measures, since we're going to be using a Deathless on this build, we get uh, the maximum uh, benefits from it, up to 50% damage. It's great. Um, it also works for your gun damage and Iron Bear's weapon damage, which is like all of our damage coming into this right here. And Phalanx Doctrine, after killing an enemy, Bose gains a stack of it. Unlimited stacks, 
10% per stack, has a 30 second duration. If we're one shot in every enemy, which we pretty much are, uh, we can get this stacked up very, very quickly. Your maximum shield and gun damage are increased, and this does work on only the left-handed gun for your Iron Bear. So what I like to do is I like to have my shock chains on my left gun, and I like to have the uh, corrosive on the right-handed gun. I just want to make sure that I got this right, because it's sometimes backwards, and it is backwards this time. So I got that wrong, ignored that. We'll switch those out. So we want that into slot 2, and we want this one into slot 1. Now, the entire purpose of the build is to try to gain as much gun damage onto our Iron Bear as possible. So, our weapons don't really matter too, too much, but they do have some sort of interaction and help for us at some times. So let's going to start with the gear, and then we'll sh um, show why the guns are uh, supportive for us. So we're using the Plus Ultra. Uh, after exiting Iron Bear, it kills increases Iron Bear's cooldown rate by 30%. Uh, it increases max health and it can roll into two shield parts, both of them rolled in health. And we also have a chance to absorb bullets as ammo and we get our action spill cooldown rate by 30% uh, on top of like Grizzled and the Anointed Self. This also works for the armor of Iron Bear so we can get approximately 4.2 million shield while we are in the bear. And uh, Pissnade, while Iron Bear is active, Taking damage has a 20% chance to spawn a nade. Now, there's a difference between Iron Bear being active and Auto Bear being active. Iron Bear and Auto Bear are two different things. So you have to be in Iron Bear in order for this anoint to work. And things like the uh, things like uh, the flare, this doesn't count for uh, Auto Bear. It's just while Iron Bear is active. Just like with the Rocketeer, the Rocketeer says that it's Auto Bear. So Iron Bear and Auto Bear are two different interactions altogether. Uh, so that goes to the Flare Calm, Splash Damage, Max HP, Action Skill Damage. The HP is going into our Shield because we have a Deathless. And because we're using Thin Red Line, that's going into our Armor and that's going into our Shield. Same with the Plus Ultra. Because we have no HP, both of these HP rolls are going into our shield because of Deathless and Thin Red Line. So we're forced down to one HP, Thin Red Line takes all that HP and it's just going to throw it into the shield instead. And Snowdrift Deathless, this is all up to you what kind of Deathless you want to use. As long as you have a Deathless, that's great. The HP is going into the shield, the AOE damage is going to be anything splash damage and Plague Bearer related. We're using an Urad Plague Bearer. And uh, the Snowdrift is just so you can get around faster. You can use an Atom Bomb, which I have attached to here as well. More Shock Resistance, which is Vladov Ingenuity, I believe. Whichever gives us the more Shock dam uh, shock Resist. Uh, shock Damage is increased, which is also going to be uh, real guns and anything Shock related. And SMG Damage is uh, up as well for our Flipper. There is going to be very few times that we're going to be out of our Iron Bear, but when we are, we need something to get kills very quickly. So things like flippers, hellwalkers, and plague bearers, just so we can get really fast kills to blow them up very, very quickly. Uh, finally, we use a trick on Forgiven. Now this has 432% crit damage and also the Urad Anoint. Now if you have the pre requisites of Urad, which is Deathless, we always have that active, and we sit in Daka Bear, that radiation damage transfers over to the gun damage of Daka Bear, as well as the crit damage from the Unforgiven if we hold it in our hand. So that's why you got to see Psycho Reaver at the very beginning of the video get absolutely shredded and melted very quickly. Now, uh, keep in mind the fastest that I killed Psycho Reaver on Mayhem 10 was probably about 38 seconds. I've done multiple runs of it. 38 seconds of Psycho Reaver in both phases, which is one Iron Bear uh, action skill. I tried it on Godly Sponge Boss and I got two Iron Bears to kill it. And it took probably about two or three minutes. We swing for a lot of damage. Now when not using the flare, you can use things like the Blastmaster for splash damage, splash damage radius, and uh, action skill damage. I also like to use the Rocketeer. It's one of my favorite comms. Auto Bear lasts now the rest of the duration that Iron Bear had left. This one has action skill damage, splash damage, and max HP. Okay, let's just go and throw this right into the build, shall we? Because I messed up my Iron Bear earlier, I... Uh, threw that right uh threw that right in the way so there's one more thing i need to mention speed demon 
Speed Demon is an absolute requirement on this build. Uh, we get faster uh, movement speed every time we get a kill, but it also affects Iron Bear. If Iron Bear gets a kill with Speed Demon active, the Iron Bear mech also gets to move that increased speed. Uh, buddy System is also really good with this because if you're using Buddy System, if you hit Buddy System with the Shock, uh, the shock railgun will actually transfer the shock damage over to the thing that it was buddy system, uh, buddy system protecting. So if I shoot a buddy system that's protecting a bandit, the shock damage is going to transfer and chain over to the bandit that it was being protected previously. Uh, if you have death and postmortem, death will hit your iron bear, and it'll take you not only out of your iron bear, but it'll put you into fight for your life. So postmortem is very bad on this build. Just wanted to point that out before we got into the build. Okay, so we jump into our Iron Bear. And it looks like the Auto Bear just took everything out here already. Let's see if I can show you that interaction that I was talking about. So we hit it with the shock and it transfers over and it kills him. And this guy over here. We don't even need like the nukes. We're just going to one shot everything here. We'll probably be swinging anywhere between a minimum of 18 mil to... Probably 53 to uh, a good couple hundred mil. All the shock damage there kills it all off. Iron Bear's biggest weakness is doors. So we're going to have to ditch Bear there. But that's okay. We can move quickly over here. So that's Phalanx Doctrine stacks. As you can see, we went up to 195,000 shield. And we hop back in here. We have approximately 4.2 million armor due to our action skills and due to uh, our shield that we were wearing. We don't really need to heal. We're just taking a lot of damage, but we're taking it all. So no vampire is really needed. Worst case scenario, if you absolutely need vampire for getting uh, overwhelmed, my recommendation would be putting one point into vampire and taking one point out of uh, grizzled. We have a lot of ways of cooling down iron bear. The Anoint of the Shield, we have, uh, um, we have things like uh, getting out of Iron Bear early, uh, and things like that. There's multiple ways of getting, uh, cooldown. The Shield ability as well, if we're taking damage, we have a chance to absorb it and transfer that into, uh, cooldown as well. So cooling down Iron Bear shouldn't be too much of a problem if all of those are coming together nicely. I should really be using a flipper here, but I'm just messing around to be honest with you. I was wanting to see if I can get the plus ultra to get some absorb for me. Yeah, normally the corrosive railgun isn't supposed to be doing that much damage. It's supposed to like plant the little bomb and then do all that bomb damage. But uh, it's currently one shotting with all of our damage that's coming through. The new flare calm is amazing. Uh, you get 100% damage and it slowly decreases as you're spending fuel. But that's okay because we have deadlines that uh, reduces our spending of our fuel and we also get fuel back every time we kill an enemy. That includes the chains of the shock rail gun, that includes the initial damage that we're doing to begin with, um, that includes stainless steel bears giving us increased fuel. The the damage in comparison to Raging Bear, and I do actually have a Raging Bear in the backpack that I farmed for to do the tests. Um, I had a plus four in here that dropped for me. The only thing is that it doesn't have action skill damage, but the, the damage difference is monumental between the two. If you don't have DLC, I would suggest that uh, Raging Bear come because it still does a ton of damage. But uh, yeah, Flare is the way to go. We'll do a quick little run on uh, Tront here. We'll do two interactions on Tront. We'll do Iron Bear and then we'll do Daka Bear. Just to show the uh, differences between the two. Shoot him once. That's okay. Resist the bombs. We shoot him again and he's dead. Alright, so there's Iron Bear against uh, Mr. Tront. Now let's do a another interaction against Tront. Because there's two different ways that we can do damage in this build. And this is the way that I showed on the second phase of Psycho Reaver at the very beginning of this video. 
uh, how Doc Bear transfers over crits and all gun damage previously. So what we're going to do is because we're not using the flare here, we're going to use the Rocketeer because we need all Iron Bear, uh, Auto Bear duration as we can. We'll set up our bear here. And we'll jump out of bear because we don't need the flare damage. We sit on the Doc turret and we can just sit here forever. You can see radiation damage numbers appearing there. That is the uh, Urad anoint that I was talking about earlier. He's just going to free fire the two guns and uh, we can just dock a bear into next week. All of which are going to count towards doing uh, Grizzled, which is going to give us action skill cooldown. So as soon as we jump out, we're pretty much already ready to go for our next bear, just in case we need uh, more bear to uh, help us out here. I think that displays and discusses the entire build here and every interaction that's going on. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. My name is B Flattened, and I'm signing on out of here. Laters.